Hi, Bella. It is said that there are many beautiful women of Slavic origin in the Eastern Bloc countries, namely Ukraine, Belarus, the three Baltic countries, and Russia. Is it true? Yes, that's right, Gina. A lot of people say that. What these countries have in common is that it is not easy for these beauties to marry because men are scarce. There is a joke in the Russian women's community that the current situation in Russia may require the introduction of polygamy. Many people believe that polygamy could be a solution to the problem of single women in Russia because it would allow more women to have the opportunity to marry and have children. During World War II, many men in the former Soviet Union went to the army and died, right? How many men died at that time, Tony? It is estimated that the Soviet Union suffered extensive military and civilian losses, with the total number of deaths ranging from approximately 8.8 .8 million to over 10 million. The total number of deaths in the war, 8.8 .8 million to over 10 million, was almost entirely male. Currently, Russia's population is approximately 145 million. In demographics, the ratio of males to females is calculated based on the number of males per 100 females, which is 86 to 100 in Russia. That means there are only 86 men for every 100 women. In terms of the whole population, there are 11 million fewer men than women. In China, there is said that there is a huge imbalance between men and women because of the preference for boys. Is that right, Bella? Yes, that's right, Tony. According to data released by the Chinese National Bureau of Statistics, the sex ratio at birth in China declined from 115.9 boys per 100 girls in 2014 to 113.5 boys per 100 girls in 2019. The male to female ratio in China is at an alarming level. Russia, contrary to China, has a shortage of men. What is the average sex ratio in countries around the world, Tony? The average gender ratio around the world is 101.7 to 100, with women slightly outnumbering men. So you can see how serious the gender imbalance is in Russia. In peacetime, not wartime, there are usually two things that lead to gender imbalance in a country. The sex ratio at birth can be tilted to one side due to rapid immigration and preference for sons. Sweden, which has traditionally had a large number of women, suddenly turned into a country with a high ratio of males when it accepted a large number of Syrian refugees in 2015 because most of the refugees were male. Nepal is a rare high female ratio country in Asia, largely due to men going overseas in such jobs. But in Russia, men have never gone abroad to find work as in Nepal. Few Russian men have ever left Russia, although many men from former satellite countries have come to Russia to find work. The natural sex ratio at birth worldwide is about 105 males to 100 females. 
did Russia have a preference for girls, leading to so many daughters being born, Gina? No, that's not the case, Tony. In general, male life expectancy is shorter than female life expectancy in all countries. This means that the male to female ratio will naturally tend to be slightly female biased over time. In fact, if it is normal, also in Russia. Demographically, no country has ever deviated much from this trend at any time. Russia's extreme gender imbalance means that there have been other special circumstances. Is that right, Tony? Yes, that's right, Gina. In fact, Russia has been a female high ratio country for quite some time. The cause is that too many men died in World War II. At the time, the population of the Soviet Union was about 190 million. A recent Russian study put the death toll from World War II, both military and civilian, as high as 27 million. Most of the dead were men, including soldiers. However, in Russia, the gender imbalance has hardly been corrected, despite the fact that almost all the generations that went through World War II have been replaced. In this regard, Russian men start to disappear by the age of 30 and by the age of 65. When they start receiving pensions, less than half will remain. The life expectancy of Russian men seem to be gradually increasing, but after the coronavirus pandemic, it decreased to 64.7 years old. Russian men die even 7 years earlier than Bangladesh men. On average, women live about 5 years longer than men. The difference of more than 11 years is a very unusual phenomenon in Russia. This fact alone makes it clear how short the lifespan of Russian men is. But strangely, even in Eastern Europe, the difference in life expectancy between men and women is so large that it far exceeds the world average, although not as much as Russia. Is that true, Tony? That's true, Gina. What has made Russia an overwhelmingly female high ratio country is that, as mentioned earlier, Russian men die early starting from the age of 30. From this period, Russian men are increasingly exposed to life-threatening situations. The number one cause of the imbalance according to many studies is alcohol. Strong 40-proof vodka is by far the main culprit in bringing Russian men to early death. There is a funny Russian saying that a temperature above 40 degrees below zero is not even cold weather, and alcohol below 40 degrees is not even alcohol. Winters in Russia are very harsh. It is understandable that it is a long tradition to Russia to warm up with a strong vodka to endure the cold. so Russian wives will be sad to hear it, but it has become popular to say that Russian men can live without their wives but cannot live without vodka. Vodka, which was the exclusive possession of the emperor, spread to the general public 
during the reign of the great emperor in the 17th century, and it has become a custom for the general public to enjoy strong vodka for a long time. The problem is that excessive drinking has become a social problem. Russians are the world's top drinkers, drinking an average of 18 liters per person per year. There is even a warning from the World Health Organization that drinking too much alcohol is bad for your health. Almost all Russian men seem to completely ignore that warning. Is that right, Tony? Yes, that's right, Bella. The World Health Organization, WHO, wants that drinking more than 8 liters of alcohol per year can be life-threatening. For every liter consumed, a man's lifespan is shortened by 11 months. So we cannot doubt that the short lifespan of Russian men may be related to alcohol. According to the British medical journal The Lancet in 2014, a quarter of Russian men who died before the age of 55 died due to excessive drinking. In addition, alcohol-related diseases and traffic accidents combine to cause 500,000 deaths each year in Russia. The Russian people's love of vodka is well known. It is said that not only adult Russian men, but also teenagers enjoy drinking. It's a really shocking story that even Russian teenagers enjoy strong alcohol. Is that right, Tony? Yes, that's right, Gina. According to the World Health Organization, a third of Russian men are suspected to be alcoholics, and 80% of adolescents drink regularly. Putin is not ignorant of the seriousness of this problem, and he knows it well. In a speech, Putin declared that the population of Russia should be about 500 million people and declared the national monopoly of vodka along with restrictions on the sale of alcoholic beverages for public health. And in 2002, he started selling vodka called Putinka, named after him. No one knows how the sales profit of this vodka is distributed. Smoking, along with alcohol, is said to be one of the two biggest killers of Russian men. Russian men drink too much, but do they even smoke a lot? Russian men should pay more attention to their health. Besides alcohol and tobacco, there are many reasons why Russian men die. One of them is car accidents. Is that right, Tony? Yes, that's right, Cindy. Car accidents are also a fatal problem among Russian men. And Russian men's indifference to their own health is also a factor. In Russia, 60% of the population is overweight and 25% are obese. This is also closely related to the gap between the rich and the poor that arose as a result of capitalism. The obesity rate is accelerating as the common people eat mostly unhealthy cheap junk food and fast food. Obesity is the cause of various fatal diseases, but most Russian men don't seem to care much about obesity. The 
the macho culture of some Russian men also subtly plays a role. Russian men love to take risks and be adventurous. If you do a search, you'll find a lot of memes about this. There is a tendency in Russia to regard this behavior as manly. In fact, drinking, smoking, and reckless driving are examples of this tendency. It seems that these behaviors appeared due to the influence of numerous wars, including World War II. These reckless challenges to show up as real men caused many accidents for Russian men. Of course, as various fatal problems accumulate, the average life expectancy rate of Russian men is declining. The recent war in Ukraine has fueled this phenomenon. Countless young men fled overseas to avoid being killed in battle or drafted. Is that right, Gina? Yes, that's right, Tony. So far, casualties of Russian troops in the war in Ukraine are approaching 200,000. The number of Russian men who have fled abroad to avoid conscription into war is rising, reaching up to 1 million. Of these, 10% are in the IT industry. The outflow of high-level personnel is probably damage that Putin failed to calculate. Vodka is the only easily available thing that can immediately soothe the pain of war and the resulting economic suffering. It is clearly apparent that the number of Russian men will decrease further due to various diseases and accidents caused by alcohol. Russia's gender imbalance has been an issue for a long time and is a serious social problem. The Russian government and all sectors of Russian society should actively analyze and address the problem. Thank you for watching the video, Gender Imbalance in Russia, provided by History and Current Events. Gina, Bella, Cindy, and Tony have contributed so far as narrators. Thank you.